Understanding physics in this video, I want to talk about accuracy and precision and resolution and what these words actually mean and why they're important. And a lot of students get them muddled up. I used to get them muddled up, but I've done quite a bit of reading. I've got it sussed out now after 40 years of teaching. So here we go. Accuracy, precision and resolution. Now, accuracy. It's how close a measurement is to the true value. So there is the true value. We take a measurement, how close together they are. And that's how accurate you are. So uh, our measuring instruments should be calibrated so that they should produce accurate measurements. Uh, to calibrate a scale, you would put 100 grams on it, exactly 100 grams, and you would see if it reads exactly 100 grams. If it doesn't, then there may be a way of twiddling a knob or something so that it does read 100 grams. If you don't calibrate your instruments, then you may end up with a systematic error. And that systematic error, I'll do a whole video talking about errors, will affect every single reading. Every reading will be a little bit too big or a little bit too small. So uh, you need to calibrate your instruments. To avoid systematic errors. Resolution. Uh, this is a, a property of the measuring instrument. What is the resolution of this pressure gauge? And it's the smallest change in value that the instrument can display. Uh, and we usually say that it's the smallest scale division. So for example, this pressure gauge has a resolution of 0.2 bar. Okay, 0.2 times 10 to the 5 Pascal. Yeah, this ruler here has a resolution of one millimeter. So resolution is a property of the measuring instrument and it's the smallest change that it can display. It's the smallest scale division is the resolution. Now, precision. This is a, a confusing thing. Are we talking about the precision of a single measurement? Or are we talking about the precision of a bunch of measurements because it has a different meaning? If we're talking about uh, a single measurement, one measurement, it's basically the same as resolution. It's how many significant figures are stated. So if you've got 3.5 millimeters, uh, 3.54 millimeters is more precise. Yeah, it's basically how many sig figs there are. And that is for a single measurement. If you're talking about a group of measurements, a series of measurements, it's how close together they are, how closely the measurements taken with the same instrument agree with each other. Uh, and it's basically like the standard deviation, although the standard deviation is the average deviation from the average. Yes, that's the standard deviation. You, do, you probably do that in maths. I'm pretty sure you will do in statistics. But it's basically how close together the measurements are to each other. Precision does not mean accuracy. If you look at this, this is the classic way of representing it. On the left, on the bullseye on the left, I've taken five measurements and they are very close together. So these measurements are very precise and they are not very accurate. On the right, I've taken five measurements and they are definitely not precise because they're kind of all over the place. There's a lot of random error involved. However, if you took the average of those, you'd be pretty near the bullseye, okay? Precise does not mean accurate. When we choose a measuring instrument, we should choose one uh, one it should be with the accuracy that we need. OK, one that will produce adequately precise measurements. We don't necessarily need half a dozen significant figures uh, and one with a suitable resolution for our needs. OK, look at this. Imagine I want to measure the length of the physics lab or I want to measure the diameter of a wire. So the diameter of a wire, the length of the physics lab, which one of those would you choose? And it should be pretty obvious for the diameter of a wire, you need a micrometer. 
you need something that reads to a hundredth of a millimeter. Okay, that will give you a very precise measurement. Yeah, because it has such a, a, a good resolution. Uh, I was going to say small resolution. Yeah, whatever. Uh, for the length of the physics lab, I would use an eight meter tape. I don't need a fantastic resolution to be honest that to the nearest centimeter will do okay I don't need I'm, I'm putting a carpet down I don't need a hundredth of a millimeter resolution uh, so you choose a suitable instrument uh, which of these instruments has the highest and lowest resolution now these are all measuring volume uh, and again it depends on the application the, the resolution of the petrol gauge is, I don't know, it'll, it'll tell you if you've got like uh, a quarter, an eighth of a tank of petrol. That's all you need. You don't need to know how much petrol you've got to the nearest milliliter. Whereas the burette, yes, can actually measure to the nearest drop of liquid. And apparently in a milliliter, there are, we usually say there are 20 drops in a milliliter. So it measures to its resolution is a 20th of a milliliter. Yeah. And then the beaker has its place as well. It Again, it depends on the experiment that you're doing. It depends on the, how accurate you need to be. OK, it, it's suitable resolution for the job in hand. Have a go at this. A student measures the weight of five different kilogram masses in the lab uh, using this Newton meter and they got it cheap on eBay, uh, comment on their results. So look at their results. What do you reckon? Comment on that using the words that we've been using in this video. Well, first of all, uh, the resolution of this instrument is 0.2 Newtons. Uh, and I, I don't think that's possibly adequate. If we're checking that these kilogram masses are exactly a kilogram, so their weight should be like 9.8 newtons. I'm not sure 0.2 newtons is a suitable resolution. I would want something a bit more precise than that. Uh, assuming that the masses are actually one kilogram, the readings are neither precise, they're all over the place, uh, nor accurate. As I said, it should be 9.8. I suspect that there is a systematic error involved uh, very possibly to do with friction between whatever's going on inside there. It's an old rusty thing. They are neither precise nor accurate because they're all over the place uh, and the average is nowhere near what it should be. Uh, last one, I think. A student uses a digital stopwatch to time how long it takes for a tennis ball to fall two meters. Uh, and there are five readings that they have taken. Comment on those readings. Now, uh, looking at those, I would say they are actually pretty precise. The readings are quite close together. Uh, if you work out the average, however, uh, it's about 0 0.83, something like that. Uh, and if you actually work out how long it takes for a tennis ball to fall two meters, and for two meters, you can ignore air resistance. It would be negligible. It's actually about 0.65 seconds. So they are rubbish. OK, they are not very accurate. They are precise. Uh, the resolution, hundredth of a second. Yeah, that's probably OK, but they're definitely not accurate. What I would suggest is another way of timing it, something that doesn't involve human reaction time, which is probably why they're all a little bit bigger than they should be. OK, uh, the stopwatch has a resolution of 0 0.01 seconds. It's probably OK. It's about between one and two percent uncertainty there. Uh, the set of readings is precise, shown by the small standard deviation. Uh, however, they're not accurate. If, if little g is 9.8, that should be 0.64 seconds. Uh, it seems that reaction time is a significant source of error, systematic error, uh, and I would suggest a timing method that eliminates that. For example, a video or some kind of a, you, know, you let go of it with an electromagnet and it 
you know, hits a gate, etc., etc. Some electronic way of measuring the time. 